There he is. Yo. How are you? Good. What's happening, man? Happy to be alive. Me too. It's tough out there. <laughs> Some may say. Some may say. That's a cool room you're in. Yeah, my, my office is louder than anybody's office on the planet because nobody has this much hemp in their office. Those, all those guitar, well, not all of them, but most of them are made out of hemp and so are all those guitar cabinets and amplifiers. Amazing, amazing. I'd love to talk about that in a minute. Sure. Uh, first and foremost, welcome to the Farms Not Farms podcast. And uh, if you'd be so kind, would you uh, briefly introduce yourself and let the people know who you are? All right, well, I am Morris Beagle and I am the founder and uh, president of WAFPA, We Are For Better Alternatives. Uh, we produce NOCO Hemp Expo, Southern Hemp Expo, Hawaii Hemp Conference, Winter Hemp Summit, several events. And we've got Colorado Hemp Company, Let's Talk Hemp.com, which is a media platform, Silver Mountain Hemp Guitars and Guitar Cabinets and Amplifiers, One Planet Hemp. We do t shirts and hats made out of hemp, uh, Tree Free Hemp. There's hemp paper around here, too. We're into all things hemp. That's what we do. We're here to promote the betterment of humanity and try to help save the world. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's that's uh, something that uh, we can celebrate immediately. And um, so, it, you know, th this show is basically about giving flowers to those of us who are who I see contributing in our world in a way that I feel is important to shine more light on and open up a window into what you're doing and why you're doing it. And you know, where are you doing it, how people can interact with your contributions. And ultimately, you know, I feel as though anybody who is going to do that is going to mutually benefit in terms of the investment into self, in terms of learning how to better our situation, learning how to work with natural resources and even more sustainable resources than what we're currently using today. So perhaps you can, uh, you know, open that window and uh, just share a little bit about your passion and why you do what you do. Well, um, I guess one of the main reasons I ended up in the hemp industry is I come from the music industry and I was in the music industry for oh, about 25 years and I still dabble in the music industry. I love a live events. I love working with creatives. Um, you're a creative. Uh, there's a lot of creatives in the cannabis space. But I think really what got me here and into the hemp side of things, when I was in the music industry, um, I produced a lot of CDs, compact discs, inside of jewel cases. And from the course of when I worked for a large music and video distributor in the late 80s through the mid 90s, and then running my own music production company from 1995 through 2010, I can't tell you the amount of product Compact disc, because there was no way to really recycle this stuff back then where there is now, and now CDs aren't even a thing. But I literally myself dumped thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces of CDs into landfills. And looking back on it in my own personal contribution to, um, to the ecological disaster that we humans are doing here on earth made me think, damn, there's got to be a better way. There has to be a better alternative than what we're doing here. And <clears throat> never to, or to say the least, I ended up shutting down my music business. The physical media business has kind of gone by the wayside in the music industry uh, due to digital, iTunes, Napster, all this stuff that kind of made this shift. Vinyl's still out there. Vinyl's still cool. Although vinyl is a petroleum product, but vinyl is still cool. Um, Anyway, I got into uh, I got into the hemp thing in 2012. We started a hemp merchandise company called Colorado Hemp Company. We in Amendment 64, uh, nice. hit the docket here. We legalized adult use cannabis in Colorado. It also allowed us to start growing hemp here in Colorado, which Ryan Laughlin in 2013 grew the first hemp crop. Salute. We launched Tree Free Hemp in 2013, which is a hemp paper company. And instead of using trees, we use post-consumer recycled material blended with hemp, and we can do business cards, posters, brochures, all kinds of marketing collateral. Packaging is on the way. Some companies are already out there doing hemp packaging. 
Um, then we launched NOCO Hemp Expo in 2014 to start bringing the industry together and, and connecting and networking and educating and educating the public. And here we are seven, eight years later and still doing the same thing and growing the industry and taking it from infancy to more like we're kind of in elementary school at this point. And, and mm. there's a long ways to go, but I think that if we can shift our ideas about how we utilize resources here on the planet, instead of extracting them from the earth, like we've been doing with petroleum for a hundred plus years and mining, if we can grow this stuff biologically through crops and mycelium and so forth and make the shift to ingredients that are less harmful to the earth and oftentimes beneficial, then it seems like a win-win-win for humanity. Indeed, there's definitely a lot of uh, or more and more plant-based items that are hitting the market from, uh, you know, mushroom leather to, um, you know, hemp everything. I mean, this is a hemp hat, you know, I'll be honest. Shout out to Gordon. What is this? <laughs> Dope, you know, and shout out to you for everything hemp that you're doing. It's, it's like they, you always see hemp can save the world and all these uses of hemp. And with that, you know, it's, it's few and far between where we can look around and point out what's actually made of hemp. So one of my favorite conversations that in season one of this podcast, you can check it out, uh, interview with Tony Budden, who has built a hemp house and wears everything hemp and sleeps in a hemp bed and the whole thing hemp and talking to you, you know, you have everything that you just spoke about is a myriad of hemp options that basically, in my opinion, make our world a better place. Because one of the things about Gorilla Healer is that we don't have standardized packaging we don't have extra waste products um quite frankly and so i really appreciate i'm grateful for the focus that you just presented which is you know um aside for our beneficial contributions to the world what's what other contributions to the world are we um giving without even realizing our impact and one of those things the one of the biggest things is our waste and so, you know, you, you, you've heard uh, take pictures, leave footprints. And that means like, you know, don't leave your trash around and uh, and basically, you know, make the place better than when we showed up. And that is really um, it's, it's a sensitive issue when we're talking about marketing, when we're talking about distribution and packaging and, you know, look at most products in our world. They're they're covered in a bunch of uh you know, more or less unnecessary um, materials. And, you know, often just to get points across, to get the, the psychological manipulation so that somebody understands what it is and wants to buy it immediately and or just representing the product in a, in a, in a classy way. And I believe that that can happen without creating all this other waste. At the same time, you know, what you're doing is bringing forth the, you, you know, you're being the change for the paradigm with which you wish to see. And that is investing your, the time that you have here on earth into what you believe in, which is bringing hemp to the forefront of the world. And, and um, what, what are the, you know, you, you mentioned guitars, you mentioned hats, and papers. What are the um, more applicable items that people can look forward to assimilating into their everyday life? And then what are some other exciting uh, I, uh, you know, hemp options that you're hearing about that are coming to market as well? Okay, well, first, I'm glad that you had Tony on your first season because Tony's a rock star. He's one of my heroes. And Guys like that have been doing it longer than I have. And I've learned a lot from Tony and Paul Benham and Chris Boucher and Barbara Philippone. And there's people that have been out there for a long time that have been pounding the pavement and, and preaching the good word. And so hats off to all of those who've come before us. Jack mm -hmm. Hare obviously wrote the, the Bible for the industry and has inspired all kinds of uh, advocates and activists around the world. And um, you know what I would say the the cbd thing has really heightened the awareness of hemp but that's just one component and it's you know a, a nutraceutical and supplement component a health component but when we come when we talk about really changing the world with hemp it's this industrial side of things it's building homes it's construction materials this is what's coming the the green wave of hemp building materials 
and composites and flooring and bioplastics, replacing car paneling, which is already being done in Europe. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna start happening here in the United States. There's a there's a car company in California that's launching an electric vehicle that can go a thousand miles per charge, and the entire body is plant based. With hemp as one of those components. Wow. Those are the things that get me excited. I mean, you look around your house and you look at the walls, and theoretically everything in there, except for the the, the framing part of it, because it's not load bearing. But at this point, all the insulation, the plaster, the paint, the carpeting, all of this potentially could have a hemp component or be fully made out of hemp. Mm. At the same time, you know, also in season one, I interviewed. Uh, um, a friend named Graham, who is a hemp farmer, though, got into hemp farming from building and buying houses and fixing them up and selling them. And one of the points that he brought up is how toxic and poisonous the houses that we live in are. And you just brought up the components that we can, you know, uh, switch out for hemp, so to speak. And many people might want to wonder why I would do that, you know, and um one of the things that we learned is that hemp is so has many more benefits compared to um, the current building materials that are being used and their level of toxicity that a breathe off in the air when they're being hit by the sun and b um, actually um, impact the people who are using them when they're building them. You want to speak a little bit about that? Well, if you build a house and the materials have toxic chemicals in them, those are going to continue to off gas. And you're living in an environment where it's really not very healthy. And it's similar to the clothes that you put on your body too. We, we put a lot of clothes on our body that are synthetic fibers that in turn get into our bodies. And then when you wash them, these little microfibers that end up plasticky, they get into the waterways and they end up in the oceans and, and, this is just stuff that eventually is going to kill off our species and kill off additional species. The species that are going away at this point in time, we're in our the sixth mass extinction. They're disappearing. And the reason they're disappearing is because of what humans are doing to the planet right now. There's never been a species in the history of Earth that has utilized resources unnaturally like human beings have. Yeah, you know, it's amazing how we come into this conversation talking about hemp and now we're talking about animals and the planet and, you know, truly, I, it, it's, it's intrinsic, right? Everything is connected. So when we're being mindful about what we're doing, you know, it, it's all, you know, everything that we come into contact with, we're impacting or is impacting us in one way, shape or form. And if we're more, if we're, if we're more uh, considerate, we're more mindful about it, then we could begin to understand it. If not, then we just go about our day, not realizing our impact on everything around us. And for me, I went through life for a long time like that. And so now that I have the ability to kind of have this, this, uh, you know, feel the connection a little bit more and have better insight to remain um, more considerate about what I'm coming into contact with, I can then there um, bring into focus, into reality, you know, what I'm putting down the drain or what I'm putting on my body. You know, we're talking about living in a house that is built with toxic materials. You know, we're also now talking about putting on clothes that are literally toxic, made with toxic chemicals. I mean, we talk about eco-friendly clothes, perhaps might even be, some people think, oh, I'm wearing bamboo, it's, it's, it's healthier. Though if you listen to our episode with Summer um, from Enviro Textiles, the daughter of Barbara, uh, who you mentioned, uh, Philippone, she brings up the fact that so many clothes are made with toxic chemicals, even uh, bamboo being potentially one of the worst at this point. And some hemp clothes now are made with toxic chemicals too, because they're being more uh, commercialized. Whereas there are processes that are really beneficial and even allow um, when we wear them to be antimicrobial, antifungal, similarly with hemp creek that we can build our houses with. Is that something that you've been uh, learning about too, putting on these conferences and hearing all these speakers that you're bringing? And, uh, you know, I, I imagine that 
that this is one of the uh, exciting uh, futures that you're looking forward to living in as well, yeah? Oh, for sure. And when you mentioned what Summer talked about with bamboo, depending on how it's processed, and if you process bamboo or hemp or any of these plant um, plant natural fibers into viscose, where you're just creating pure cellulose, and there's a chemical process that really is is toxic and it's unhealthy, and, and it's the same thing as oh, now I've got viscose bamboo, which is really no different than a synthetic fiber that's gone through all these processes. Um, that again, really is not sustainable. So Summer and Barb can really speak to the the ways that you have to, to process this material. And it's the same thing with building materials or any of it. I think that, you know, from the way it's grown, is it grown conventionally and are we spraying a bunch of mm. toxic chemicals on it to grow it so it produces more yield? And what's that doing to the soil? Or are we growing it organically and regeneratively and healing the soil, sequestering carbon, and then taking those materials that, you know, through the entire process can continue to sequester carbon or end up in the, in the consumer market where they're not going to have the, the footprint such as a petroleum based product or a, a chemically produced product that, just really literally fills the shelves of consumer products and industrial products all across the globe. And so when I think about hemp, hemp is one of the solutions. Hemp is one of the materials that can be out there and help it. But I see hemp as a, a platform right now and a stage to not only talk about hemp's potential beneficial impact, but everything else that's out there. Again, regenerative agriculture, growing all of our crops, rotational crops, and you know, living more holistically with the planet and doing things the way that we should be doing them so that Mother Earth thinks, you know, okay, these guys aren't that bad. <laughs> let's keep us here. <laughs> yeah, let's, but I'm telling you the way that we, the path that we've gone down, she's not happy. And hopefully with conversations like this and and our ecosystem growing with like minds that, that want to make the change that understand that we have to try to get back in balance with the earth. You know, I am hopeful that we can make the change. Conversations are starting to happen. Can we flip the political culture that's out there and the denialism that man is impacting the environment because it's pretty obvious through science that we are. Thank you. You know, your, your focus is, um, is just perfect for what I am uh, looking to deliver and the messages that are clear to me that really, you know, we're well served to think about and to apply that knowledge as wisdom in our lives. And with that being said, you talk about the relationship between, you know, the clothes or the building materials or anything bringing down to step one which is what is being grown to produce that and how is it being grown and whether or not we're raping the rainforest for its trees or to make farmland or we're growing hemp crops that take a year or or, or less way less you know to produce a ton of materials whereas we don't have to ruin the rest of the world and from from that crop we can create so many um, now sustainable resources that are not putting microfibers into the ocean that are, you know, we, if you ever were looking at these uh, ocean documentaries and marine life documentaries, there's so much human pollution that is just really impacting other worlds. And it, 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 it breaks my heart, to be honest with you, and it helps and it, and it heals my heart to know that there's people like you who are putting everything you got, who are all in, you know, you're, you're, you're I mean, when Guerrilla Healers started, you know, cannabis was not such a mainstream conversation. It was still taboo. It wasn't as, um, you know, hush, hush. It was more taboo. So getting more acceptable, though, I didn't put a leaf on the logo. I didn't want to put it out there as like cannabis charity, even though that's what people were calling us. And really, you know, it was because I wanted to be able to walk 
and and feel protected and have people reach out and feel protected and feel like we can have a conversation at the same time at, at that time 2014 was when Gorilla Healer was established even though the work was happening you decided hey you know I'm going to start throwing conferences and um, hemp conferences and put this conversation out here and you know so on one hand there's people that are doing it on more of an underground um and then the, on, on the other hand there's people that are bringing it more mainstream and you say we legalize it you say we're doing this and we're doing that that's people who are willing to put their um you know identities out there and say you know what this is who i am and this i believe in as to be beneficial to society and you know god willing we get to be successful at continuing to bring this to the forefront of the conversation because there's so many of us that are still asleep and uh and and you know that's why so many of us are living the nightmare that 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 so many of us are talking about while many of us are talking about living the dream and that's really just creating you know, I, I spoke to uh, to a producer of mine a little earlier. His name is Ill Mind, and he was wearing a shirt that said, "Paint the picture you wish to see," and that is exactly what we're talking about. You know, you want to see things in our world. You can't. You know, we can say, "Oh, I can't make that happen," but we can also say, "Hey." Life is but a dream. What I want to see, I'm going to paint, and I'm only going to use the colors with which I wish to see. You know, that's beautiful, right there, brother. I like that. It's up to each and every one of us. We all make a choice. We can be stewards of the earth. We can be stewards of society. And it's going to take each and every one of us to make that choice. Every day, if I go to a grocery store, I can walk by everything in the store. And you know what I choose? I choose organic. I choose brands that I feel that I connect with that are trying to do the right thing. In my previous life, it was processed food. It was laced potato chips and Doritos and uh, General Mills and stuff that is just conventionally produced where it's just put it out there. And none of this stuff is healthy. None of it's good for you. None of it's good for society. So it's up to us to vote with our dollars. Who are we going to support? And we, we can change the General Mills and the Coca-Colas and Pepsis if consumers demand that. And, and they are starting to listen. And this is where we've got some momentum going and we just have to continue to build and build and build upon it. And again, it's Absolutely. just not hemp, it's just better choices. It's better alternatives. Mm. You're right, you know, a lot of people think they can't afford organic though in the long run, I think that we can't afford not to eat organic because when we're eating chemicals that are designed to kill life, it's kind of uh, what it does. And, you know, there's there's those of us who are more sensitive and then there's those of us who are George Burns and drink whiskey and smoke cigars until we're 101 years old and God bless us. God you know, I say George that. Burns. <laughs> Rest in peace. Though I will say that, uh, you know, for me, you know, eating Doritos and, and candy and Sour Patch Kids and drinking soda led me to a life of not being able to focus, of being overweight, of having inflammation, of just being, you know, not myself really. And, and learning to not service instant gratification and nourish the uh, uh, long-term benefits of feeling incredible which is an investment, you know, it, it doesn't always happen overnight, though ultimately with a deep breath, I instantly feel great. So, you know, it's just in what we're focusing on, what kind of glasses do we want to put on, how we want to see the world. And with that, we can actually, you know, see new uh, pictures. And, and we, we, don't, we only know what's possible when we can see it. And because we're human, we want to mimic it. We want to make it better. We want to optimize. And that's like the nature of us. So, you know, that's why I feel like so many of us, this cannabis uh, um, health illusion <laughs> or evolution is, uh, is helping us really understand like what we're doing and what we're experiencing and what we want and what we need. And that right there begins to develop what I feel is a huge step in the success of, you know, humanity, which is why do we care, you know, caring. And uh, it seems like you care and here, you know, Morris, we obviously, 
And I say that between you and I, though the world doesn't know this, we haven't really sat down and had a conversation yet. And so I'm really grateful that we're getting to do this. And, and, you know, I love to, to learn, uh, in a way that I get to share what I learned because I'm often having conversations with people and I'm like, wow, I wish somebody, I wish other people could hear that, you know? And so that's why I love having these genuine conversations because, you know, it's not planned. We didn't know what we we're going to talk about, but we do know who we are. We do know why we're here. And, and sometimes we need a reminder though, at the same time, getting to have these kind of conversations really helps us, you know, um, find out where home is and home is where the heart is. So what does my heart say? Oh, my heart says, you know, I really, I want, I want, I care, you know, and I see that you care. So I salute you for showing, you know, for wearing your heart on your sleeve, so to speak, and uh, being a leader for um, others to uh, understand how we can lead in our own lives as well. And so thank you. Um, you know, you, you bring a lot of, uh, like I said, speakers and, and you, you uh, workshops at these conferences. What are some of the um, greatest things that, I mean, I, you know, with, with uh, all due respect to everybody that you've brought on, what are the, some of the things that have retained in your mind uh, that have made you so excited to, to bring forth those messages or to know that are going to be happening in the world so that we can be excited too? Wow. That's a, that's a challenging one there. I, Cause I've <laughs> been fortunate to have so many really good people yeah. involved in our events and, and you know, I certainly don't know everything. And that's why I bring in experts that can talk about regenerative agriculture, like Doug Fine and Ray Archuleta, um, Tony Budden, Paul Benham, uh, Alan Dronkers, who was his dad founded Hemp Flax and Hemp Flax is out there really changing the world by creating materials that are you know, going into building houses throughout Europe and building vehicles. And they're creating these are the possibilities that can really help shift the way we we create things and the way we we grow things and the way we utilize resources here on planet Earth. So hats off to all of them: Barbara Philippone, um, Annie Rouse, Janelle Ralph. Uh, there's so many people that have got personal stories and are, have got these convictions. And, and they're true. And they're out there day by day, every day, you know, walking the walk, talking the talk, and, and they're just doing it. So I get inspired by so many people that I've been around the last five or six years at the conferences we've done and other conferences as well. I mean, I'm certainly not the only organizer of good events out there. And, and I am happy that I, I think we do good events and we've got a great team that's really passionate. And I just look forward to expanding this conversation and growing our army of advocates that truly want to make a difference in the long term for our planet. Mm. Well, thank you. Thank you. You know, um, you're, you're doing a great thing. And you're right. There are other events that are being produced and there are other people in the world that are doing great things. And it's uh, it shows your level of character that you are here mentioning other people's names and, and talking about, hey, look into what these people are doing, because, you know, that's who I'm bringing forth to show you, you know, um, what this industry is 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 achieving. And so you know, thank you for, uh, for uh, you know, opening more windows so that people can jump down new rabbit holes and learn more about what's happening in our world. And uh, yeah. And, and, uh, uh, let me throw out a few other names because please. something else that's, uh, you know, the, the conversation of diversity and inclusion has definitely become you know, heightened in the last several years. And mm -hmm the opportunity for this big tent and we've got Cheryl Murray Powell um, from the African uh, American community community we've got L Winona LaDuke and Muriel Youngbear and Mark Grignon from the, mm -hmm. the tribal nations uh, Lorena Beltran and Lorenzo Armendariz and and the folks in in Mexico and Latin America now is the time where we can create equity for all because inclusion is what's going to get us to the point where we can truly do great things, where mm. the best ideas can actually formulate and then get put into the universe and into action. 
So I, I, I'm really excited about the direction of where everything's going, the, the conversations that are happening about inclusion and, and making sure that everybody can participate. Because if we democratize a system and all can play, it can be a truly wonderful world. Amen. And thank you for bringing up people like Winona LaDuke, who's just, you know, um, doing great things also. And <clears throat> uh, I met at Standing Rock and, uh, you know, just, you know, those of us who are living the prayers of our ancestors, basically, you know, how do we make a world a better place for us in the next seven generations and beyond? We got to do the work. It's not nobody said it was going to be easy. And uh, at the same time, you know, it's definitely fulfilling to know that you get to wake up and one day, you know, God willing, die happy, knowing that we lived you know, and so, you know, thank you uh, for living and showing how you're living and uh, and doing it. Is there anything that, you know, just just to uh, conclude on a on a magical note, if possible, um, is, is there uh, anything that you, when you're walking around in your life or when you're doing your work, you're like, man, I just wish people knew this, you know, this, whether or not it's one thing, whatever it is like this would be an awesome time to share it. Uh, well, I would say that thoughts are things. And mm. if everybody knew that, and you just realize that my thoughts create my reality, and a lot of people's thoughts create a very unpleasant reality. And I just think that they don't get that. And mm. fortunately for me, and I don't know when the light went off, but it did go off. And I realized that you know, it's my mindset that determines my reality. And so I choose every moment whether I'm going to feel good or I'm going to feel bad. And I choose to feel good. I choose to feel positive. I choose to embrace the moment and the, the future with optimism. And I mm. would hope that everybody can at some point come to that same understanding. Amen. That's uh, very wise. You know, the book, The Four Agreements, helped me really have gained some insight into what I agree with allowing into me or choosing to continue to cultivate. And, that, you know, I feel like that's what you're touching on. And even in, um, you know, traditional uh, uh, Kabbalah wisdom, there's, it says that there's a few type of people, one who's the ultimate connected Sadik, which is the name or somebody who might be like a Buddha, you know, somebody who's just super tapped in, right? right. And they, they're, they're perfect, basically. They don't make mistakes and they don't even have a bad thought. And then there's the person that is just like that person. You can't tell the difference between them from sight, though the difference is that that person has a negative thought Though the second thought, they always choose to do what's right. And then the third person, which is basically most of us, which is we have, you know, we have that thought, we entertain that thought for however long. And so that's the difference between understanding that we have the ability to choose what we continue to think about, because we really can't control what comes into our head, but we can control what we do with it. And understanding that we hold the remote to the, you know, to our reality, what channel do we want to live on? That helps me, um, you know, realize, reveal my power in, in choosing my reality. So thank you for bringing that up. That's, that's humongous. And uh, I'm really, really happy that you did. So, you know, I, I like that the remote to your reality, we choose the channel we're on or we mm. live on. I, that. That's great right there. I'm taking that from you. <laughs> <laughs> do it. You know, spread the love. And, yep. uh, you know, as always, um, shout out to buildasoil.com. Shout out to uh, everybody who is choosing to uh, bring more pleasantness into our lives. And, of course, share that joy. And uh, subscribe to the Farms Not Farms podcast on Spotify and Apple. Check out the archived episodes on farmsnotfarms.org. And uh, as always... Let's end on the miracle of life, sharing a deep breath and on the count of three. One, two, three. It's a pleasure to be alive with you, sir. Keep up the great work. Thanks, brother.
We'll talk soon. Love. Subscribe to the Farms Not Farms podcast on Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts.